Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex analysis. If you are new, welcome and if you are returning, welcome back. And I'd just like to say uh, thank you for those who are, uh, you know, subscribing, you know, this week and over the past weeks and months. And I do hope that you find, you know, great value in my weekly analysis in supply and demand and you're learning a lot. Um, great interaction as well with uh, some of the traders traders who are asking me questions and um, yeah if you do want to ask me uh, some questions and uh, just send them in the uh, description in the, well, description the uh, comment section in the description box below um, and if you're watching this on YouTube or you can email me at info at trading180.com and I will endeavor to get back to you ASA P um, also in the description box below is the links to the charts on TradingView um, as well as the uh, timestamp so you can skip to your currency pair you know favorites um, if you do have any uh, favorite currency pairs you know a lot of people trade the uh, the, the majors euro dollar um, pound dollar etc so starting off as we do every week on the um, the fundamentals and the uh, basically uh, sentiment drivers and fundamental data that is probably going to be ending up moving the markets. So um, uh, it, says, it says on Trading Economics, which is a great website, um, next week the US will be publishing foreign trade data. So trade balance, why is that important? Because of um, the effect on GDP, gross domestic product. Um, you know, a great, a good trade balance is um, is important for economic growth. Um, if you're, you know, selling more than you're buying, then, um, you know, your country should be doing well exporting more than you're importing. Your country should be doing well if you're importing more than you're exporting, then, um, you know, they're, they're, there's probably uh, some problems going on with the economy. So as long as, you know, US trade balance gives some decent figures, especially uh, with the backdrop of China as well, you know, the trade war. Um, and uh, potential deals going on, I think that's going to be a decent um, or potentially um, a decent market mover. So you've got retail sales, industrial production and flash market PMIs elsewhere. Important releases include UK inflation rates, um, that'd be decent, unemployment wage growth and retail sales, euro flash market PMIs, China first quarter GDP growth rate, that'd be good for um, you know risk sentiment global whether you know the world is is potentially slowing down or um, in, you know uh, uh, just basic, basically maintaining a steady growth um, and China being the uh, world's economic engine pretty much um, so that's important to watch industrial production retail sales and fixed asset investment Japan inflation rate that'd be important as well um, trade balance and uh, Nikkei flash manufacturing PMIs and Australia employment figures. Investors will also react to the RBA, which is the Reserve Bank of Australia and the RBI, I think that's the Reserve Bank of India meeting minutes. And that's really to do with whether they're gonna be uh, hiking, holding or cutting rates and what their opinion is on the state of the economy. So um, pretty busy week this week. And if you you know don't necessarily understand much about fundamentals or you want a bit of a refresher, um, if you look in the uh, description box below, um, you'll see um, a guide to my fundamental analysis and sentiment, right, when it comes to Forex trading. And it's pretty much everything I know regarding um, fundamentals and sentiment. And it goes through, uh, you know, uh, why fundamental analysis, gross domestic product, inflation, and so on and so forth. Also, as well, we have the fundamental analysis spreadsheet. So if you click on that, it should take you to this and it just gives you my um, an outline of my opinion on what I am on um, certain currency pairs so the US dollar I've been bullish for you know for, for a long time um, so I've just been buying pretty much dollars against everything else um, and then pretty much the ratings are here regarding strength so I might be neutral on the Australian dollar or the uh, New Zealand dollar but um, neutral is better than you know bearish so you know you'd be buying for example the um, Aussie yen right and you'll see what happened pretty much this week with risk on uh, sentiment um, which is basically fundamentals in play this doesn't take into account risk sen risk sentiment when it comes to risk off you'd have to do you know a bit of reading when it comes to that but anyway um, definitely 
watch the course it's absolutely free no need to sign up to anything just click on you know this and it goes through all of the videos right here for you to watch so um, let's get to the charts and starting off in the Dow Jones dollar index and dollar index um, it's just a measure of um, dollar strength against the major currencies like the euro the yen the pound and the Australian dollar so last week we came up into this zone of supply and uh, we also had some uh, horizontal and diagonal resistance up in this area as well so um, potentially there would have been some some sort of weakness if you were looking to sell the dollar not necessarily selling the Dow Jones dollar index but you'd be selling the um, you know for example the dollar yen or the dollar Swiss etc etc so um, what we had this week we did react prices did sell off a little bit so what you want to do is you want to watch for the Dow Jones dollar index to sell off before taking any kind of short trades if you're looking for long trades then you'd be looking for pretty much just uh, some bullish price action you know um, to be occurring um, preferably at levels of you know demand so this week pretty much got rejected um, but the dollar did have some decent um, uh, numbers uh, I think it was on Thursday or Friday so um, yeah we're in again between this this supply and this demand zone try prices are pretty much ranging let's go to you know a live chart on this so at the moment prices are really between caught between I would say this high and this low yeah so you can see price have been contained and uh, we're pretty just above if you're looking to buy the dollar this is this this 50% uh, area represents fair value and this would be either an expensive level or a cheap level depending on whether you want to buy or sell the US dollar but um, we're kind of caught between this and this so this is what we call a range of market or price acceptance so um, at the moment again if you're looking for any kind of buy trades you'll be looking for bullish price action at the moment or preferably prices to come down into here before looking for so bullish price action there looking for a sell trade be looking for anything like this or even currently if prices start to sell off at this level here before looking at shorting for example you know dollar cad uh, pound dollar etc right so keep an eye on the uh, Dow Jones dollar index for um, dollar strength or dollar weakness so moving on to the dollar yen and dollar yen we had this week or from last week we had prices really come up into this area here right before selling off there was a bit of an opportunity right here at this demand zone but I wasn't necessarily looking to buy here and then we had prices really kind of make new highs so what we've got now is a new demand zone right, if you go to dollar yen so this is what this would have looked like probably on an intraday time frame so that first demand zone there potential opportunities for buying if you're if you are you know trading intraday 15 you know five minute 30 minute charts when prices came down into this demand zone there was an opportunity there but I trade you know uh, the four hour uh, and and higher so for me that wasn't necessarily any uh, there weren't any entries so um, but what we did have now this week is a nice demand zone right here yeah so what now what I'm looking for is prices to kind of come back into this area here before looking at a long trade also as well you did have a bit of confluence of um, diagonal support in that area but because there was no um, demand zone and demand zone is really and supply zones are proof of value so um, we didn't have necessarily value at that area I'm also going to delete this level here if we get prices come down here I'm going to be a buyer if risk is on risk starts to come off then right now would be a uh, a very good um, uh, level to try and look for short trades if you want to buy the Japanese yen overall I'm a buyer of the dollar I'm bearish on the yen um, but I'll be looking for pullbacks into one of two zones to get long on the dollar 
Uh, moving on to the dollar Swiss last week, we pretty much just went from strength to strength. There was a bit of a pullback to get involved in right right here again intraday and then prices pretty much come up into the supply zone and now being rejected so if we're looking at the charts this is pretty much what happened again we had higher highs higher lows okay so we had higher high higher low higher high higher low back into that demand zone and then prices ended up higher into this supply zone here before selling off um, so right now what I'd be looking for potentially is going to be we've kind of touched this demand zone here I'd probably be looking for prices to come down into this area here where you've got some horizontal confluence so you've got resistance 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 bit of support at this level bit of resistance so I'm looking for here to here so anywhere around this uh, 998 level 9975 before looking at some long trades track that across as well and that would be the second area I'm looking to get long potentially um, from a short perspective um, if you didn't take this short here you'd have to be looking for prices to again retest this level of supply before looking to get short or you can take the underside of this supply zone uh, to look for any kind of short trades. Remember you are buying the Swiss franc when you get short and you're saying that the Swiss franc is gonna get stronger than the dollar, right? So if you believe that to be um, truth then um, or possible, then uh, that's where you wanna try and get short uh, looking at the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD this week again we had a bit of a range in market an opportunity to again get long at this demand zone All right and again we're back down in so looking at the uh, dollar CAD this week um, again lower time frame sorry you'd have to look for um, probably if you're looking to buy the dollar waiting at this lower area of demand because this area has been touched several times so once twice three times so if I'm looking to be a buyer it's going to be really at the lower end of this demand zone before looking at a long trade if you're looking at shorts you'd probably have to look for prices to really kind of come up to this area here before looking at that or if prices make a new swing low then this becomes a level of supply and then you'd be looking for a short trade here just to ensure that oil is selling off as well um, uh, before buying this currency pair or if you're looking to sell this currency pair or buy the Canadian dollar you'd be looking for oil to increase in value um, moving on to the New Zealand dollar US dollar and uh, again we did have some intraday opportunities to try and get short so let's go to the chart from last week zoom in a little bit this was a supply zone and then you had prices come up into here before selling off and then reacting again off of this demand zone all right so again there were some intraday opportunities trading off of the one hour Traders getting short here and potential shorts right now. Shorts being you're buying the US dollar and uh, I think uh, betting that the New Zealand dollar is weak. The New Zealand dollar is uh, central bank, uh, the RBNZ is said that they would be uh, cutting interest rates potentially if, um, if, if, they, if they did have a next rate move. So that they're basically dovish on their currency. They want a weak currency. Um, so uh, just getting short this currency pair um, is, isn't such a bad idea, decent idea. Me personally, if I'm looking to get short, I'd be looking for price to come a bit higher before looking for any short trades and even around here. Um, moving on to the, oh, well, as a matter of fact, before I do that, if you are looking to get long on the Australian dollar, then pretty much now is the uh, 
the the time if or if you want to wait for me it's basically like a little a bit of a pullback before looking to get long uh pound dollar um really didn't move anywhere this week so um again what we're looking for is prices to probably come back up into this supply zone uh before looking for short trades if you're looking at a long trade this may isn't necessarily the best level you've touched it once twice three times four times so i probably expect this to break and then this would be the next area i'd be looking if i was looking to buy the british pound over the uh the us dollar this would be the area i'd be looking for um but if i'm looking to buy the dollar over the pound then i have to wait for either price to come up here or for a new load to be made and then for prices to come back up to a supply zone before looking at the short trade um, with the pound being, um, uh, I guess, uh, no deal Brexit being taken off the table, and the you know the deal being extended, um, I think the uh, the pound may uh, increase in strength, not necessarily against the dollar, but um, you know against the, some other uh, currency pairs. Moving on to the U.S. to the euro dollar, and the euro dollar this week has come into a zone of interest, so short trades at the moment this is what we'd be looking for we're looking to buy the dollar um there is some demand zones right here so if you are looking to buy the euro then you'd be looking to buy the euro at the at this area here what we do have is also a bit of confluence within this area but again the question you have to kind of ask yourself is why are you buying the euro from a fundamental perspective? Dollar is, you know, um, uh, the stronger out of the two. Doesn't mean that you know prices will always go down, but in the balance of probabilities, you probably got a decent trade to the short side. If it doesn't work out, then you know anywhere around this area in this supply zone would be where I'll be getting short next. If you're looking to get long, you're probably waiting for a pullback into this demand zone before looking at long trades or down here into this area right before looking at getting long um what else is there nah, i think that's about it um euro yen it's so euro yen again risk being on prices really have decided to uh make higher highs higher lows we've come back up into this this lower supply zone here so if you are looking to short this currency pair by the Japanese yen then this is a decent level I pretty wait for a bit of a fresher level this has been touched already so if prices can come up here before looking to get short now is not a de now is a decent time as well matter of fact the first time it touches is good second time is still okay but when you start to get into, into the third and fourth times um, you know the level gets starts to get weaker and weaker um, so now is, is okay but probably wait for any kind of um, short trades but you also have to wait for um, risk off sentiment to kind of come into the market so let's say for example China slowed down you've got the European elections starting as well so might not be a bad um, uh, decision to look for potential short trades as uh, there's going to be a bit of uncertainty in Europe right um, so uh, decent decent short from a risk off perspective if you are looking to buy the euro then this is going to be the first area to look for um, some uh, some long trades and we do have a bit of a level probably around there let's extend it a little bit up slightly yeah I'd probably say that area is it's okay um, moving on to the Aussie dollar US dollar really I should be uh, using this so what have we had this week so this week we've had prices reject off of that level but then with some uh, Aussie strength we've come back up into this supply zone so again decent short in opportunity if you're looking to buy the US dollar right now quite a decent but I prefer I prefer the underside to this supply level here yeah if, if prices do come up to here before looking at any kind of short if you're looking for a long trade um, I guess there was some uh, some 
some demand here as well from an intraday perspective but if I was looking at probably buying let's go back a little bit uh, probably um, there is a bit of I guess intraday let me go down into the intraday time frame yeah you'd be looking for that level there because you've got resistance 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 and then got a bit of confluence in that demand zone right there from a daily it's not not necessarily the clearest but on the lower time frame it is if you want to be a buyer of the US dollar sorry buyer of the Australian dollar over the US dollar um, that would be the first area to look for any kind of uh, long trades intraday and finally looking at the Aussie dollar Japanese yen again this is what happened last week and uh, risk being on so the stock market you know rallying um, gold selling off a little bit you've had you know the, uh, the Australian dollar basically break out of this supply zone so looking at the uh, Aussie yen what next I'm going to clear this demand zone here and we also have some demand right there in fact I'll just um, make it a bit more accurate right there um, actually in fact I'll, en I'll engulf this as well right there so we've got a cluster of demand right here as prices been making higher highs, higher lows. So what do we want to do when you get a cluster of, you know, something like that going on? You just add horizontal support and resistance. So probably the top of this zone is going to be the first area to look for any kind of uh, long trades if prices pull back into that zone. Um, intraday wise, let's see if there's any. Yeah, so you've got decent level right here as well for a long trade if prices come down deeper into this 79 round number so that would be from for me that would probably be the the better level if it, if it does come down here before looking at any kind of uh, long trades just making sure that risk is on when you're taking this type of uh, trade so if China's doing okay um, uh, and uh, you know globally that should be fine um, if it comes to if the European elections do start to come out and you know Brexit um, and there are things that are changing then potentially we could see um, the, uh, the risk off environment but then I wouldn't necessarily be trading this currency pair based off of any kind of European election uh, risk off sentiment you'd be paying you'd be basically looking at the euro yen um, uh, or, or the pound pound yen type trades Right, so um, that brings us to really the, uh, the end of this week. And um, again, hope you enjoyed it. If you do have any questions, just email me um, or leave a comment in the section box below and I will endeavor to get back to you ASAP. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Um, and thank you again for watching and take care.